Okay, we have our guest speaker, Shelly, up here. And she's going to talk to us. What What is it called this week? Sustainable New Jersey? Is it uh, green something? We, we call it sustainable development. Big hand for Shelly here. We call it tyranny. Is this a rose by any other name is twice as sweet. Well, tyranny by any name, even if it's a green, is still tyranny. And as far as I'm concerned, sustainable development is green on the outside and red on the inside. Red for common. It's a watermelon. A watermelon. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, show you a movie. Very short. Some of you may not be as familiar as others. I think some of you are quite familiar with Agenda 21, with ICLEI, and with what's going on in your county, your state, your country, and the world. How many here are familiar with the state strategic plan, the new draft development and redevelopment plan, you've heard about it or you've read it, who knows? Show of hands, good. Okay, some of you do, great. How many of you have been on any of the calls that we've had talking about this? Anybody? Okay, good. I would, like, I would love to have everyone in the room on these calls because what we're doing is we're putting together a plan to go to these meetings, the six meetings, to have public input and figuring out how we're going to make them listen to us. All right? I'll go into that in a little bit more detail after the movie, but first, I want to make sure you see this short film. It's 15 minutes. It's done by a fellow by the name of John Anthony, and he lives here in New Jersey. He's great. He does a wonderful job of presenting the topic. So I'm going to let him take it away, and then we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on here in the state. Oh, oh, oh. Much closer screen or much closer table. Actually, put the table up closer. Up there. Move it up. Yeah. 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 The table up. Hold the wires. They won't see it. Careful, careful. Okay. So while we're getting this put together, so you don't have to uh, just sit here and watch this happen, the um, some of you met, were we were all around in 1992. I think everyone in this room was around in 1992. It was a very momentous year because during that year a few things happened. Some folks got together in Rio de Janeiro. And these were people who decided that they knew better than we did what needed to happen to the world, what needed to happen to the environment, and how things needed to be put in order. What they came up with was a plan, and it's a very definite plan, a plan for everything. If you wonder sometimes, how is it that so many things got out of control? How is it that everything seems to be out of control? We've talked about schools tonight are out of control. Spending, it's ridiculous, isn't it? New Jersey spends more money than any other state in the union on education, on public schools. New Jersey spends more than any of them. And the United States spends more than any other country in the world on education. So are we getting our bang for the buck on education? Is anybody happy? No, we're not. We're not happy. But you know what? That's by design. There's a plan to destroy our country by destroying our schools. And that plan is part of Agenda 21. In fact, it's Chapter 40, if you look at it. You read the plan and you can finally understand, gee, now I know what's going on. Oh, they have other plans for us, too. They have plans for energy. Do you know what the plan for energy is? The plan for energy is that it's not sustainable unless it's renewable, the official renewable energy, wind and solar, that's it. What about hydroelectric power? No, sorry, you're controlling dams and the fish can't float freely. Not sustainable. Ridiculous, huh? What about nuclear power? Oh no, we can't use nuclear power, nuclear is bad. Why is nuclear bad? It's virtually emission free. Nope, sorry, not sustainable. We have to dig up the ground and extract it. That's not sustainable. In fact, 
when you look at the Brundtland Commission, which was done in 1987, a precursor to Agenda 21, the Brundtland Commission on the Environment said that, quote, the following things are not sustainable. Human caves. Okay, this is, this is an interesting question. How many of you know what I'm talking about when I say this? A human cave made of brick and steel and mortar and concrete. What is a human cave made of brick and steel, mortar and concrete? Yes! Houses are unsustainable. Very good. You get 10 points. You're taking direct aim on us, our society, our way of life, our property. And the way they're going to do it is through gaining our property, by making sure that all of the property is controlled, by making sure that our energy is so restricted that we can no longer do anything. We were just talking about manufacturing cars. Does anybody know what's happened to the manufacturing base in this country? Do you think we could do again what we did in World War II? Not today we can't. No, our manufacturing capacity is a shroud of what it used to be. We have a rust belt. Okay, we have a rust belt. We don't have manufacturing in this country. It's been exported to China, Japan, and everywhere else. So what we want to do is we'd like to find a way to reverse all this. We'd like to find a way to reverse the problem. And to do that, we all have to be active. That's why I was saying, before I leave tonight, I'm going to have a sign-up sheet. And anyone who wants to get on my weekly calls, you can do so. And what we do is we're talking about how to approach these plans. Uh, how to approach this plan, Agenda 21, in this state by trying to get revisions on the, the draft state strategic plan. Okay, is that ready yet, John? Okay. So I'm going to start with a primer of Agenda 21. It's called False Choices, and the speaker again is John Anthony. Um, hopefully you can all, can anyone not see the screen right now? Okay, everyone can see it. It might be a little small from where you are, though. Our founding fathers knew this and declared our rights unalienable, meaning no person could ever take them away. So critical are property rights that our Constitution protects them. In this presentation, you will learn how the UN's Agenda 21, or Sustainable Development, affects property ownership. You will also find sources for additional information. As Americans, our property rights matter. Land, buildings, and material goods are the means by which we live. Without rights over our property, we have no rights over our very means of survival, and therefore we are no longer free. Our founding fathers knew this and declared our rights unalienable, meaning no person could ever take them away. So critical are property rights that our Constitution protects them in the Fifth Amendment. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Individual rights and freedoms are two elements that make America exceptional. Not all nations think that way. Sustainable development was coined in a 1987 report to the UN called Our Common Future. It is defined as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This sounds fine until you read the report. It states, poverty is a major cause and effect of global environmental problems. It then blames nations like the United States for consuming too much and having too much wealth, much of it in the form of private property. The report concludes, the only way to make the future sustainable is to reduce America's living standards and transfer our wealth to developing nations. The radical ideas promoted in Our Common Future were codified as Agenda 21 at the 1992 UN Conference on Environment and Development, known as the Rio Earth Summit. 18,000 people from around the world attended. Agenda 21, according to the UN literature, is a comprehensive plan of action to be taken globally, nationally, and locally by organizations of the UN system in every area in which human beings impact the environment. More than 178 nations adopted Agenda 21, including George H.W. Bush for the United States. 
Although Congress never approved the program, President Clinton established by executive order the President's Council on Sustainable Development, whose stated purpose was to implement Agenda 21 in the United States. The President's Council on Sustainable Development operated through 1999, but its actions are now embedded in every federal agency and influence state and local communities across the United States. President Obama's Executive Order 13575 created the White House Rural Council, which further authorized every federal agency to oversee all food, fiber, and energy needs for all rural sustainable communities in America. The UN groups use the terms sustainable development and Agenda 21 interchangeably. Most people never heard of Agenda 21, and here's why. J. Gary Lawrence is a world leader in smart growth. He served as advisor to the President's Council on Sustainable Development. Writing for the Millennium Papers, a strategic planning publication for Agenda 21, Lawrence said, Participating in a UN-advocated planning process would very likely bring out many who would actively work to defeat any elected official undertaking local Agenda 21. So, we will call our process something else, such as comprehensive planning, growth management, or smart growth. And they have. Agenda 21 uses warm and fuzzy names that blanket it in environmental causes, like smart growth, open spaces, and social justice, to name a few. Regardless of the name, the intention is to remove this, called urban sprawl, and replace it with this, often whether you want it or not. Agenda 21 mandates that all states, including the United States, must resolve all environmental disputes peacefully and in accordance with the Charter of the UN, not in accordance with our own nation's laws. Our Constitution says that man's rights are inherent to his nature as a man, and as such are unalienable. This is in direct opposition to the UN Declaration, which holds that man's rights are granted by other men, and therefore can be taken away by men. Sustainable development's political agenda originates in the UN's founding documents. This is not surprising, since many of the nations represented needed a point of agreement to rally around. The UN Charter provided that. Whereas our Declaration of Independence protects our citizens and their labor, the UN Declaration grants government the authority to withhold your property for the good of the community. To implement sustainable development in the United States, unalienable rights, such as the right to property, must be eroded or struck down altogether. The authors of Agenda 21 said it will affect every area of all human life grouped according to three objectives, equity, economy, and the environment. By defining these terms vaguely, a litany of abuses in states, counties, and local communities has resulted. By rubber stamping preconceived plans, using manipulative visioning and consensus sessions to create the appearance of public buy-in, and acquiring grants from sources with questionable motives, the entire process of implementing sustainable development policies is suspect. Social equity means using the law to restructure American life. The authors of sustainable development knew their objectives would clash with those of the average U.S. citizen. Therefore, to achieve their objectives, they called for a shift in attitudes. The premise of sustainable development is that individual human wants, needs, and desires must conform to the views and dictates of the planners. Harvey Rubin, executive member of ICLE, has said that individual rights will have to take a back seat to the collective in the process of implementing sustainable development. The next D is economy. Remember, Agenda 21's core purpose is the international redistribution of wealth and the creation of public-private partnerships. Maurice Strong, at his opening speech at Agenda 21 Earth Summit in 1992, said, Current lifestyles and consumption patterns of the affluent middle class involving high meat intake, use of fossil fuels, appliances, home and work air conditioning, and suburban housing are not sustainable. According to Agenda 21's preamble, the developmental and environmental objectives of Agenda 21 will require a substantial flow of new and additional financial resources to developing countries. This declaration mandates, if the conditions of the poor are to be improved, wealth must be taken from the rich, in this case, U.S. property owners. Sustainable development planners use conservation easements, eminent domain, reauthoring of master community plans, enhanced regulations, and millions of dollars in grant money to acquire private property as the means to redistribute wealth both in theory and practice. This is effectively lowering the U.S. standard of living to that of the rest of the world. Agenda 21 states that equity will be achieved through implementation of the international economic order and through transfers of resources to developing countries. In addition to its appeal for international redistribution of wealth, 
Sustainable development restructures the economy by replacing our free enterprise system with public-private partnerships. Public-private partnerships provide lucrative contracts for those companies partnering with the government and non-governmental agencies, while non-partnered companies struggle to survive against their subsidies, regulations, tax breaks, and insider privileges. With it goes the free market system. Sustainable development places nature over man. According to the Rio Declaration, human beings are at the center of concerns for sustainable development. We are only entitled to a healthy life if it is in harmony with nature. It continues, to achieve sustainable development, states should reduce and eliminate unsustainable patterns of production and consumption. Most people support laws to protect the environment. Sustainable development uses the environmental movement as the means to promote a political agenda. ICLA is a non-governmental organization tasked with rolling out sustainable development. Their action plan restructures the world's governments so that all people will be the subjects of a global collective. The implementation requires the surrender of many individual and property rights. Once fully implemented, ordinary people will be left unprotected from de facto decrees placing nature above man while relegating man to the status of a biological reason. The method of implementing sustainable development in communities is alarming. Projects are often initiated by groups such as ICLE or the American Planning Association who create fear over problems portrayed as a crisis. Farmland development, urban sprawl, poor water management, wildlife preservation, or too many cars on the freeway are examples. Stakeholder council meetings are typically arranged under the auspices of soliciting input from community members. Often these are already supporters of the plan. Surveys poll a small number of residents and include loaded questions such as, which of the following areas do you think should be protected or acquired? A typical stakeholder council meeting is run by a trained facilitator. His job is not to enter all views into the record, but to guide the group to a predetermined consensus. Tactics vary between facilitators, but consensus generally is reached by subtly marginalizing opposition while recording the good ideas and allowing criticism only for the bad ones. Once a problem has been identified, every NGO, nonprofit, and local government has a vast stock of boilerplate solutions at hand, enabling them to identify problems with the goal of implementing predetermined outcomes that advance sustainable development policies. The same stock solutions are applied in Stockholm, Boulder, Santa Cruz, or anywhere in the world. ICLE, whose mission is to help local governments implement sustainable development, has worldwide offices and operates in over 600 U.S. communities. Today, every county in the United States has sustainable development directives guided by federal agencies, NGOs, and or ICLE. NGOs often gain local community compliance with promises of funding grants. Their list of money sources is impressive and includes the Nature Conservancy, the Sierra Club, the National Audubon Society, the American Planning Association, and the National Teachers Association. Over 2,000 NGOs are accredited by the United Nations for the purpose of implementing sustainable development in America. They receive massive tax advantages from the IRS. This map shows the UN's vision for our country's land use when sustainable development is fully implemented. The black areas are where humans will be permitted to live. <laughs> Sustainable development is a plan for global control using land and resource restriction, social transformation through education, and other programs. The land use element of sustainable development calls for two action plans designed to reduce or eliminate private property, the Wildlands Project and Smart Growth. Upon implementation, all human action is subject to control. Since all things ultimately come from natural resources on rural lands, the transfer of the land from citizen to government control will make it easy for government and its partners to control what we have, what we do, and where we go. The rural land use embodied in the Wildlands Project is tied to its urban counterpart, smart growth. As human beings are barred from rural land, there will be a concentration of human activity in urban areas. Through smart growth, the infrastructure is being created for a post-private property area in which human action is subject to the centralized government planning. Sometimes called comprehensive planning or growth management, smart growth is the centralized control of every aspect of urban life, including energy and water use, housing, population growth and control, public health and dietary regimens, resources and recycling, social justice and education, toxic technology and waste management, transportation and air quality, business, and economic activity. <clears throat> Citizens are becoming aware. Commissioners in Carroll County, Maryland abolished the Office of Sustainability. 
Spartanburg, South Carolina, Las Cruces, New Mexico, New Rochelle, New York, Amador County, California, Carver, Massachusetts, and dozens of other communities are either pulling out or pushing back against ICLEI, the American Planning Association, and Smart Growth. Here are eight steps officials can take to protect their citizens' property rights. Place individual property rights first in all planning negotiations and actions. Refuse federal or state money for new sustainable development programs and transition out of existing ones. Do not accept grant money without examining all of the attached stipulations. Avoid consortiums for the purpose of obtaining grant money. Avoid partnerships with the federal government, HUD, NGOs, foundations, and corporations that advance the sustainable development agenda. Be certain any plan you implement can be repealed if it is found to infringe on individual property rights. Work with citizens to create a property rights council. And work with planners who will protect citizens' property rights. Our local communities are in peril because a small group seeks to convince us that unless we surrender our property and freedoms, unless we subsume our individual rights to the good of the community, the planet will not survive. Yet this is a false choice. For over 200 years, Americans have protected our planet, our nation, and our liberties. As communities, we can pull together to create our own plans to improve the environment without the control of international groups and the seductive lure of easy federal grants. Together, we can respect our environment and keep our rights and freedoms. Working together, that is the real choice. Here are some resources to check for more information. Thank you. These are, these are some very good resources online. Thank you. John, John does a good job, doesn't he? He does a good job. Um, I wanted to... Uh, He's a former public school teacher. He is available for speaking, and no, I don't get anything out of out of saying that. Um, but he's a wonderful speaker. Um, question? Can you buy a copy of this? Yeah. Actually, this is downloadable on YouTube, and um, if you go to Did You Know Online, which was one of the uh, one of the, the Earls there, Did You Know Online, all one word, dot com. Agenda 21, and he's got a wonderful uh, area where he's got some, he's got this video, some easy to read handouts, and some other things that are really very good. Um, I want to give you some good news, okay? You just heard the bad news. Oh, here's another question. Agenda 21 for dummies, too. Agenda 21 for dummies? There are actually are a lot of resources out there on YouTube. Um, the, the reason there's a lot of resources out there on YouTube right now is because, of course, there's a lot of interest in this right now. Did you hear in the uh, presentation, uh, don't, don't put that away yet, okay, just move it up because I'm going to show a couple more things. Um, did you hear in the presentation, and there was so much, it went by so fast, that talked about how man is a resource. What do we do with resources? We use them, right? Man is nothing more than a biological resource to be used. That is the view of humans in Agenda 21. Does this sound like anything that we want to participate in? I see a question back there. I don't have a question, but I was going to say, uh, Obamacare, that he no longer refers to people or patients as people or patients. Units. He calls them units. This goes hand in hand with what you just said, and it shows us the path that Mr. Obama is leading us down. Universal health care, socialized medicine is also part of Agenda 21. It's all part of Agenda 21 when you start looking at it. education. The fact that our education is in such a terrible situation right now. I was speaking the other day with a wonderful woman by the name of Beverly Elliott with T for Education. And it, I only have one of these, unfortunately, but please come up and look at it. These charts are just amazing at, at how bad things are. And no one, no one in the media is talking about this. So it. It's, it's a humongous cover-up, and yes, they're all, it, it's not, it's not that they don't know. It's not that liberals don't know what's going on, it's that they just, they're trying to deceive the rest of us, because there's, they've left too many breadcrumbs, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, at some point, it's strange credulity to think that everybody is completely unaware that what they're doing is going to destroy this nation in particular, and much of the rest of the world as well. So at some point, you just have to say, you people are just feeding us a, a continual line of, of nonsense. But I did promise you some good news. And I see in this letter that there is someone in this room who's very well educated, who uh, spoke to his township council meeting. 
and uh, was happy to see that Ocean County, no town or the county itself, none are actually members of ICLEI, which is great. This is good because we have towns and we have counties in New Jersey that are members of ICLEI. But the good news is, although this says that Monmouth County is in ICLEI, it's not anymore. Oh. <laughs> and so I'll take that good news one better. Neither is Somerset County. It's out. So we've done what no other state has done. We've got two counties out of Ickley last year, which is just tremendous. And we, the people who are concerned about implementation of Agenda 21, um, what we're doing is trying to work within our borough, town, and county councils to turn back the tide of sustainable development. I see a hand raised over here. Some of us from East Jersey uh, Tea Party attended Ocean County Freeholders meeting, and we were really overwhelmed by how receptive they were to us and claiming they had nothing to do with Agenda 21. Well, a lot of, a lot of your elected officials don't understand what they're doing is related to Agenda 21. And that's where the gentleman who's talking about talking points, this is so important because you need to have simple things that can educate people as to what Agenda 21 is because it's so all-encompassing. It really is an octopus. It has so many arms. It has like 40 arms. And how can you tell people what Agenda 21 is when just the very name sounds like some kind of tinfoil hat conspiracy theory and turns them off from even listening to you, right? All right, so what you do is, what has worked for me is talking about property rights. Everybody understands property rights. I mean, even, even liberals do, really. Even a toddler understands the concept of mine, right? This is something we all kind of understand. And when you look at it in those terms, you can begin to reach out to people and say, well, wouldn't you like, you know, to be able to bequeath your land to your kids when you die? You know, wouldn't it be nice to be able to do that? Are you sure you can? Because you know what? The EPA has been dedicating as, as um, wetlands anything around 200 feet from any any ravine or creek or pond, and even intermittent creeks and streams and ponds. And you know, maybe you want to check that out. And you can kind of open a conversation that way. But um, that's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is with the schools, because we sometimes it's difficult to speak to people about schools because people want to take sides. So a way to talk to them about that is to show them charts and graphs like this. Isn't it time that public education was about the children? What are the results of our increased spending in education? It is not higher test scores. In fact, our kids are losing ground. We're, at, we're, we're reaping the, the fruit of what was sown uh, starting with the advent of the public school system. And what we've seen is the culmination of that, or at least the product of that. It's going to continue cranking out more occupiers, just like we've seen. This is the product of the public schools. It doesn't matter how much money is thrown at the problem. Money is not the problem. The problem is that the actual education and the curriculum is going south. Instead of teaching math, we're teaching connected math, which doesn't teach 2 plus 2 is 5. It's 4. It teaches 2 plus 2 is 5 if we all agree on it. What's cool is we can agree on anything, can't we? And then there's no moral absolutes. And then they have you. All right, I wanted to go over a couple more things. I don't know how I'm doing on time. Um, let me check that real quick. So, yeah. All right, so let me get something else up here. Go for it. You'll find people, you know, we were talking about people with lots of money. Some of these people with lots of money do things that, that really don't help us out. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try to get this. Uh, you can see a little better. Sometimes people do stuff with their money that really don't help us out. What is progressive about progressive insurance? Like Barack Obama and George Soros, Peter Lewis is a very wealthy man and what he's done is he's used his money to donate to various causes but unfortunately his philanthropic contributions are questionable he supports programs that contribute to left-wing movements like the aclu and other ngos non-government organizations billions of dollars actually and what he's done over time 
is created, uh, let's see, Lewis gave a lot of money to moveon.org. Those of you who aren't familiar with moveon.org, it's an extremely activist, progressive organization. Uh, they are active in lots of things, including vote fraud. Uh, George Soros uh, does things with Move On. So Peter Lewis, who makes a fortune off of people with his insurance, okay, and you know I've had I've had insurance to progressive a time or two without knowing what I was buying at the time, but you know sometimes you have to get insurance quick, right? So you buy from the guy, right? Well, this is what, what actually happens. He's contributed to the ACLU greatly so they can help remove nativity scenes, so they can ban songs such as Silent Night from schools, refusing to allow students to write about Christian aspects. Did you hear about the, ch the boy who got arrested, not arrested, but chastised uh, in one of the other states recently, just last week, I think, because he wrote an opinion piece in his school newspaper. It was a point-counterpoint. One, one other child wrote a point that was anti-Christian, one wrote a point that was pro-Christian, and the pro-Christian child got chastised, he basically got suspended, the, you know, it, it was terrible. So there's really, uh, this, this whole agenda is, is coming to fruition because we have people like this who contribute. So you, you really have to watch out where you're buying your stuff. I found out today that Office Depot is in partnership with Italy. Office Depot is in partnership with Ickley. And I wrote a letter, I wrote a letter I did to their investor relations, and I told them I'm going to tell everyone I know that Office Depot is a part of Ickley. The stated goal of Ickley, I'm reading the letter right now that I wrote, is to create a global network of local governments for sustainability. It's part of an effort to impose UN Agenda 21. Uh, it's far removed from our founder's vision. I hope you will share this information with your board. Until your association with this un-American group is terminated, I will no longer purchase from Office Depot and will encourage others to do the same. And I sign my name. <laughs> Investors don't like to hear that the decisions of their companies are controversial, so they'll tell them to stop that stuff. So enough, enough people write. Is there a list of the companies that are yes. donating? Well, I, I don't have such a list, but if one did exist, it would certainly be helpful. What you need to do is, if you think one might be, uh, you can look on the ICLEI website, and they're very proud about saying who their contributors are, you just ICLEI.org. Um, you can look up and see who contributes to them, who their sponsors are, yeah. Uh, this is what we're talking about in, in my calls, my training, and I wanted to get into the... Um, the state strategic plan, the draft that's roving out. Let me explain just for a moment. This plan came about, I don't like talking to people when I'm not facing you. Uh, this plan came about, we already have a state strategic plan, a development, redevelopment plan that's in effect right now in New Jersey. It was, it was uh, put in in 2001, and it's Agenda 21 and Sustainable Development all the way. It's, it's not a good plan. It's 300 pages, very detailed. Um, obtuse, hard to read, and so forth. So this group got together, uh, the, the, the committee, it, there was a committee, it was appointed through the Red Tape Commission that Kim Guadagno chaired after Governor Christie was elected. And they were told to come up with another committee that would then do a new state plan because the old one was not good, not, not, not well enough, it didn't work well. Um, I'm not saying that anybody is in, in, our whole government seems like it's in the tank for sustainability at this point. We really have some education to do at our top levels of state government, believe me. But at least the, it was seen that it's not working well, let's try to get it to work more efficiently. And it started out as an economic plan, but it turned into a sustainable development plan for the state, and here's how. Because we had people on this committee who were all developers, environmentalists, people who had ties with the environmental movement or elected officials that were all in the tank for sustainability in their place, in their areas too. Uh, there's, I think, one or maybe just one elected official on this committee. The rest of them are all appointees of some type in some other role. So they're not accountable to us at all. And they went back to their experts who were all planners from the American Planning Association or Rutgers Blaustein School, which is an APA school. So 
they're, they're in an echo chamber where all they're hearing is sustainable development, sustainability, 24 by 7, sustainability. And of course, that's what they came up with. So the state development and redevelopment plan takes those concepts, puts a little bit of economic development in it, and tries to do a few things to streamline the bureaucracy. But overall, the plan, as it is, is a huge plug waiting for the socket of sustainable development to come plug into it. And would it do that? Would sustainable development necessarily happen if this plan were in place? Let me tell you, it already is. How many people know that Ocean County is part of New Jersey, is part of North Jersey? Would you say Ocean County is part of North Jersey? No. No, but you are. And you know who says you are? There's a North Jersey Regional Transportation board that says, oh, Ocean County and Monmouth County and Middlesex County and all these other counties, 13 counties all in all, are part of the North Jersey Regional Transportation Zone. And they've come up with a plan, of course, to give us transit, whether we want it or not. By transit, they mean rail, okay? They mean high-speed rail, or they mean commuter rail, or they mean light rail, but they mean rail, maybe a bus lane or two, but it's generally rail, 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 maybe a bus. And this plan basically says, oh, well, we're going to insert smart growth into this North Jersey transit area. So it's going to try to insert smart growth through this whole region. Now, that's a region. Who do you think is on the committee for this region? Did we elect these people? No. no. Are they accountable to us? No. no. They're going to put in whatever their green growth planners tell them to. So. This is exactly what's going to plug into the state plan because that's what's plugging into the old one and this one doesn't do anything to protect private property rights. Nowhere in this plan is there a statement that protects private property rights. In fact, citizens, ordinary citizens aren't even mentioned until the very end when they're talking about having these six meetings for public input. Now, it, it's just amazing to me how anyone can possibly think that this committee of unelected bureaucrats can come up in their echo chamber with a plan that's full of smart growth and sustainable development that infringes on everybody's rights, redistributes wealth, puts us in stack and pack basically in cities, preferred development areas is what they call them, but it's the cities, it's Camden, it's Trenton, it's Newark, it's Jersey City, these are the preferred development areas that all of our tax money is going to get sucked up, redistributed and partially go to that. That how is it they think that at the end of that, when they've looked through the plan and they say, oh, it's good, we sign off on it, we're ready to send this to the governor, it's not going to be heard by the legislature, it goes to the governor after this. The only thing between this plan and the governor is us. And at the very end of the whole process, they insert six, six, that's it, that's all, meetings to get public input. How many people are in this state? Do you think even a tiny portion know what this plan is? Do you think people are aware? No. So how much public input are we going to get at these public input meetings? Very little. Very little. Do you think they're going to have some of their shills there that are going to be saying, oh, yeah, exactly. They're going to be stacked. So part of what I'm doing is I'm helping to train people to resist these techniques. Does anybody know what the Delphi technique is? You do. You do. Delphi technique is a technique that was drawn up in the late 1950s by the Rand Corporation to achieve consensus, there's that word, with scientific differences of opinion. Okay, why this was important is at the time we had a lot of, at the end of the Second World War, we had a lot of scientists, very smart people, going to the defense military industry, and they all had different ideas on how things should be done. And nobody would agree. Nobody would relent. So they came up with this consensus model to try to get input and then come up with a path forward. And they did. And the result were things like the space program, and it worked very well. This is scientific research we're talking about, a specific type of thing. What it's been applied to, however, is trying to social engineer the rest of the population. I'm not going to go through this whole deck, but <clears throat> what is Delphi? A process to achieve consensus. So widespread is it today that we don't even realize we're being Delphied. Okay, every time someone comes to you and says, well, 
you know, do you want this choice or this choice? And you don't like either choice, but you aren't allowed to be given any other choice. You're being delphied. So that's what John Anthony was talking about, is when you have a choice that you either have to give up your property rights or you have dirty air and water. That's a false choice. You can do both. You can do both. Does anybody in the room want dirty air? Anybody want dirty water? <laughs> of course we don't, okay? Of course we don't. But yeah, that's that's the rhetoric. That's what it, that's what keeps being said, oh well, the Republicans want dirty air and dirty water and they want your children to starve in the streets. I mean We've heard this, the two partiers are violent racists. Well, of course they're going to say this because that's how they marginalize the opposition. It's exactly Alinsky's techniques. You're very right about that. You, you, you identify the opposition, you freeze them, and then you marginalize them. This is a great way to do it. So if you want to be on my conference calls, we're going through this. And I'd be happy to get everybody on the call. I can get 100 people on my phone at the same time. So I'd like to fill that up. I have a question in the back. Yes. Could you tell us something about sustainable Jersey? You know anything about that? Uh, when I went to this uh, Brick Township Council meeting, uh, they said they're not involved with the ICLER, but that uh, they were involved in sustainable Jersey. They seemed to think that was okay. So I didn't know quite how to answer that. Sustainable Jersey is a program it's a non-government organization um, who's basically, uh, their charter is to implement smart growth and sustainable development. So whether they say they're involved with it or not, they are. Um, they, you know, I think they're being, they're dissembling, to be honest with you, if they're saying they're not. Uh, I had someone with, a, uh, what is it, NJ Future tell me, you know, they're actually the director up there was telling me we had nothing to do with Agenda 21 because we were formed in the 80s before Agenda 21 and I'm like actually this whole thing started in the 1970s when Nixon was president so you don't get off free from there okay the whole thing started a long time ago and it's been growing ever since the uh, sustainable development movement if you look on I had something um, I don't want to take the time to look for it, but I had a document that I put together that I actually passed around, and this gal from NJ Futures got hold of it, and she was looking at it. I have the three E's, you know, economy, equity, and equality. Uh, put up, let's see, how did I do it? On Sustainable Jersey has a page, one of their pages where they give their three missions. It's like prosperity, it's three P's, okay? Their three P's mean exactly the three E's and they actually use it, use the words in defining it. You know, like prosperity is economy, uh, people is equity, and, and so forth. So they're actually implementing the three E's, they're actually implementing, there's nothing about what they're doing that isn't sustainable development, smart growth agenda 21. And the reason is because they all use the same tools. They all use the same plans. So they are going to implement the same thing. Thank you. Was Nixon involved with that? I don't think Nixon was directly involved in it. His name hasn't popped up at all. <laughs> Believe it or not, you know, one thing he wasn't responsible for directly. Okay, uh, here's something that's going to be of interest to a lot of folks. I want to show you something, at least if I can get it to where we can all see it. This is a resolution exposing you in Agenda 21. This came out of the Republican National Committee, if you can believe that, about two weeks ago. Now, what I'd like to do, and I have some handouts here for people, um, I'd like to get this handout and some others in, every, in people's hands before you leave, and I have them up here on the table, a lot more than I can go over tonight because it is a very complicated topic. But basically, what the RNC did was say that they wanted to um, expose Agenda 21 as being pushed through local communities. Um, it names the Wildlands Project, uh, Regional Visioning Projects, Green Projects as being not good. Resolving that the Republican National Committee hereby exposes the public and public policymakers to the dangerous intent of the plan. In addition, resolving that the government 
and no state or local government is legally bound by UN Agenda 21, and that it has never been endorsed by the U.S. Senate, and therefore, be it further resolved, the federal and state and local governments should be well informed and reject all grant monies associated with it. See, that's how they get you, is through the grant monies. We could have another complete conversation about the money on this stuff. And the committee shall deliver a copy of this resolution to each member of Congress, all presidential candidates, Republican candidates, and all uh, RNC state and territorial party offices. And then the sponsors are on the back here. So what you can do is take this. You can find this out on the internet at this point now because it's been posted to enough websites. It's actually on the uh, uh, GOP.org website now. So they've got it posted themselves at RNC. You should take this to your local uh, either your town council or your county and say, I want you to sign this. I, I just got a candidate for Senate to sign this because I said, you know what, this is a big deal in this state right now and you ought to, if you're really a Republican and you want to be taken seriously, you need to sign this. So I actually got a candidate to sign this. Oh. Rulo. Joe. Yeah. Joe. But Rulo has a problem. Rulo has a problem because he's in the tank for solar. And if you look him up on on the internet, his his whole background is implementing sustainable solar energy. And yeah, I'm looking at him signing this and I'm like, uh, I can't take you seriously. I'm sorry, you're still getting money off of subsidized solar, which is you know, socialized energy. So that's the problem with Rulo. But he did sign it. So if you, and one, one more thing real quick. Let me see if I can find the, I have so many things up right now. I want to find the plan so I can tell you when the meetings are. Um, I tell you what, Bayshore has them up on the website, so if you look at the Bayshore website, you can find it on the Agenda 21 page. Um, I don't seem to have it in my handouts here. Yeah, if you could get those out, but I, I just don't have it in any of my handouts right, right now today. Are there any more questions? I know we're, we've gone over time a little bit. I really appreciate it. Uh -huh. With so many politicians, Democrat, Republican, Liberal, Conservatives, knowing about this, why is it still kept under the rug? Because the media controls the conversation. Absolutely. And if you say anything about it on the media, they'll marginalize you and they'll write you out. They'll, they'll edit you out. Even Fox News? Fox News is totally... No, don't watch Fox News. No, sorry. I'm sorry. If, if people are Fox fans in the room, I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend you, but I haven't watched them in years because I think they're in the tank, too. Uh -huh. But who can you watch? Actually, actually, Newt Gingrich talked about Agenda 21, and he said he would uh, get us out of the UN. Ron Paul would get us out of the UN. Um, because of his constitutional stance, there's really nothing else he could do. Um, what else? Um, Santorum thinks that it's not good the way it's been implemented, that we can modify things um, and get out of parts of it and maintain some. You know, so there's the school of thought that if you stay in the UN, you can help shape it. Personally, I think it's, it's an evil organization. The, better, the faster we're out of it, the better. <laughs> I don't watch any television news. Zero zip. I haven't watched television news in 10 years. Uh, I get all my news off the internet. All of it. Twitter, blogs. Um, I get news from different, um, good, really good blogs. Try um, biggovernment.com is a good one. Try the Drudge Report is another good one. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'll start finding them from there. Go to Michelle Malkin's website. She's very good. Um, there, there are different editorial, you know. Um, I started getting my news from, believe it or not, the New York Post for a while. Because they're, they're an island of, of semi-conservatism in a liberal city, and I work in New York City. I also read the Wall Street Journal's editorial page. 
which is very conservative. So if you pick pick your your spots, you can find a few of them in the mainstream that aren't as bad. Washington Times is good at times. So, um, but TV, I never watch television. I never watch it. I think it's just totally in the tank. Someone else, some okay there. Shelby, the other, the other, I came to something real amazing the other day, watching something on Agenda 21. And there's a lot of politicians that either profess they don't know or that really don't know. The problem is if, if they're voting for this stuff and we vote them out of office, it doesn't really matter because their staffs, the staffs that are there, are still feeding this stuff up to whoever we put in there. we got to figure out a way to get them to. Defund it. Definitely. Once we, because see, the, the United States funds the vast majority, it's the vast majority of the funds into the UN right now. If we stop funding it, it's going to fall apart. Same thing with the IMF, the Inter International Monetary Fund. We put 65% of all monies in the IMF come from the U.S. So when you say the IMF is bailing out yet another country, you're bailing them out, okay? We are bailing them out, and that's wrong. We have to stop this stuff. This is what's draining the wealth out of our country, and that's by design. It's all it's all Agenda 21. So when you start looking at it, say, yeah, hmm, because one of the chapters in Agenda 21 is money. And it says, basically, it's not fair, it's not socially just if I have more wealth than you do. Do you know what the average income of a person in the United States is? It's about $34,000 a year when you, across all people. Do you know what the average income in the world is across all people? It's about $1,200 a year across all people. Social justice mandates that our incomes be equal. So our incomes need to drop to $1,200 a year so that we can be socially just. This is the goal, and this is what's at stake. That's why they want to drive us off our property, because our property is the source of our wealth. So that's it. OK, oh, I have another question. Uh, so we heard, this is a to something you could have said. So we heard about Warren uh, in regard to salary, the taxes he's paying against, you know, we have the 99% versus the 1%. I don't know if everybody here knows it, but Mr. Buffett only takes $100,000 a year salary. His secretary gets $200,000 a year secretary. Uh, $2,000 a year for being secretary. So from that point of view, he should be paying more than he's paying. But part of his salary, also, uh, he puts in, uh, what do you call it, uh, stock options, which you don't pay for until you execute them, because in fact the price of the stock could go down and you could wind up with nothing. So I wanted to fill people in, because we hear 99 versus 1, in conjunction with what you just said, and we hear about the Buffett tax. By the way, Mr. Buffett is very upset that Obama keeps saying the Buffett tax. <laughs> and he doesn't like that. But you have to be aware he's only making $100,000 a year as salary. That's what he's giving us. Yeah, so I just want yeah, to let Mr. Buffett, I, I wrote Mr. Buffett, I'm sorry, I do these kinds of things. And I said, Mr. Buffett, let me, let me give you an address, OK? It's really easy to pay more tax. All you need to do is send it to Internal Revenue Service, Austin, Texas. Here's the zip. Send them $500 million, we'd all appreciate it. I didn't hear back from him, but you know, that's just me. Okay, that's all you have to do if you want to pay more tax. And here's the big lie Warren Buffett and every other person who has assets that they want to keep does the same thing. They get an army of lawyers and an army of accountants, and they have foundations. Bill Gates has a foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and this is how they hide their money, and this is how it doesn't get taxed. So, you know what? Hey, guys, brilliant idea. If you want to pay more tax, just don't have foundations. Don't claim any deductions. Just pay the flat rate. Yeah. And now you're you're basically, you're, it's social justice, but they won't do that, will they? No. 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 Because they want us to pay. Exactly. Uh -huh. This is just another comment about Mr. Buffett. He has already, of course, written his will as he's a nice gentleman. And in that will, he states, nobody, none of the people who are going to inherit his money, will pay taxes. And that was right in there. So, I mean, you can look this up if you want. But I think this yeah, is very I'd like to see He does not want to pay more taxes. No, of course not. They don't, but, they don't I know, want to. I'm just saying that people are misquoting, especially Mr. Obama. Yeah. And I think it's important that we can we know these facts so we can speak to other people intelligently. 
Thank well, you. actually, thank you. Those are good comments. And the other thing about Warren Buffett is uh, Berkshire Hathaway, you know, the, the one share of stock for Berkshire Hathaway is what now? $150,000 a share. It's oh, amazing. Yeah. They split it. it yeah. They split it, yeah. so it's come down. But um, he actually has uh, transportation systems like trucking and rail and stuff. And um, his trucking system apparently is now being used to truck oil back yes. from Canada into the United States now that the pipeline is out. Isn't that convenient? Isn't that just great for Warren? Hey, this is how it's done. So it's all crony. Crony capitalism isn't real capitalism. Crony capitalism is not good, and that's the next step before fascism. Any other questions? Just thank you. Thank you so much. Just wanted to say thank you for giving me the opportunity. Oh, here, are, here are the meetings, okay? I can give you these real, real quick if you want to jot them down. My husband was kind enough to pull it up on his, his machine. Um, February 13th in Galloway, New Jersey. That is at Stockton College. Okay. You don't find any liberal you know, it might be better if you, uh, if you just sent it to me. I'll email it to everybody. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. The February 13th, 16th, 23rd, 27th, 28th, and March 1st. So they're all like Bang, 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 real quick. So one of the things we're doing in our meetings is coming up with um, ideas for what we want to say, okay? And we're going to ba basically how to go into one of these meetings and be heard. Because the, the idea is, we're going in with the idea that we're going to all be marginalized and nobody really wants to hear us. So anyway, thank you very much. My sign-up sheet is here. And uh, I have this wonderful movie, which um, I, I don't um, have any stock in this guy, but this is the Agenda documentary. It is absolutely amazing. Curtis Bowers did this, and I bought 10 of them because I wanted to be able to, you know, give them to people who wanted them, uh, who maybe didn't want to spend the money. So if you want one, come on up. It's free. It's free. Okay, thank you, Shelly. It was really very good. I'll email those dates out for you. Uh, we're going to draw the meeting to a close. We all know how to do that, right? Done. 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 God bless America. Beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Thank you everybody. God bless. Get home safe.